Behind me are three different types of uh, covers for the insulation. One is an aluminum siding. This is the stucco insulation that you can see quite clearly here. And on the third side, we have a brick veneer on a thermal insulation. So if we have an um, exterior wall, and this could be the wall, and having an opening inside the wall, this exterior wall might be insulating enough to um, avoid uh, big heat losses from the inside uh, to the outside. So for example, if I have insulating bricks or if I have insulating concrete, this could be a massive construction. But in most cases, I'm going to apply a specific insulation, which would be a mineral wall or maybe uh, polystyrene extruded uh, or expanded polystyrene and with this insulation which has a low uh, specific weight and thus um, a very good thermal insulation I could fulfill the insulation needs of this closed wall and then as the insulation is very uh, soft and insulating it needs protection. So the next step would be to protect it either with a stucco or with uh, a particular construction and a cladding. So uh, what we are talking about in this uh, session will be the thermal insulation and the protection devices. What looks like massive brick uh, is not, because there's an expansion joint here and uh, we can see that there's not only vertical expansion joints, but also horizontal joints here. This is uh, not a mortar joint, it's a flexible joint and this part here moves independently from the rest, so it's really a thin veneer, there's ventilation here behind that and the load bearing part is behind uh, what you see. We have an insulation and according to the weight of the cladding material we will have to apply different constructions. So the bricks that we have seen are layer in front of the insulation very often we have a so-called ventilation space behind this which is mostly for evacuation of uh, humidity that might occur here on the inside. So at a certain level I will have to take this humidity out and the wall is rather heavy so I want to put it on a basement or maybe a metal angle that then will have to be linked to the load-bearing construction behind. Uh, another heavyweight material could be prefabricated concrete elements, if this would be here one element. So as they might become rather heavy, I will have to find a way to organize the distance to the supporting facade. And then I need an element that would be connecting the prefab concrete element uh, to the facade itself and suspend the load. So these are for distancing so that I can have a flush surface here in front of it. And this is for transmitting the load into the load bearing wall behind that. Another case is uh, natural stone. Natural stone is used in thicknesses of about uh, three centimeters nowadays. And for this we can have a slightly lighter construction which would uh, link the natural stone to the facade which would allow it to expand and to retract in a certain way 
insulation could be behind that. And astonishingly, um, there can be some rain getting in, but then it has to be ventilated out again. So it's semi-open and not very waterproof, this type of suspension for natural stone plates. So for the lightweight materials, they need a supporting structure. And this can be um, out of wood or out of metal or whatsoever. And so then I could have the facade material here and insulation layers behind that and also a ventilation layer. Yeah, this uh, ventilation layer would be stacked, but if this is a corrugated metal siding, then the air could get around the supporting wooden profile. Some facade materials need a support as well, so this could be a wooden support for, for example, uh, copper siding. And then we often have a asphalt layer and the metal is um, mounted on top of that. So it's not very visible here. And the, um, the joint between two of these leaves is folded. So that's what we see here in elevation. That's one of these folds in side elevation. Often it's terminated like this, turned around and joined with the basic material. And so this is why very often you see these diagonals in um, sheet metal facades that are mounted on wooden supports. So as a siding material, we can use brick, we can use wood, we can use metal as well. This is very popular right now in Germany. Corrugated uh, sheet metal, different sizes. Well, this is for structural use rather than for siding. And behind me here we have different qualities of stainless that could also be used. In America, asphalt shingles are quite popular. In Germany, not so much. We prefer uh, burnt uh, clay, uh, brick material on the roof. And uh, we could use copper applications as well. Yeah, this must be uh, aluminum. And what else do we have? This is pre-patinated copper here. Lead has um, not been used uh, very often recently because it um, contains toxic uh, products that are washed out and then get into the groundwater. So we don't use it this often anymore. Although it has been used for a lot of cathedrals and is a material that lasts very long and uh, can be bended to particular forms. That's interesting in this sense, but uh, not that much anymore as a facade material. So here I'm standing in front of a building which has been insulated on the outside. So behind this prefabricated concrete panel which has been secured with a bolt, there's insulation and behind that is the load-bearing concrete structure. And in the upper part here we have aluminum panels that replace the prefabricated concrete panels, behind that an insulation and behind that the load-bearing structure. So here we have another wall. Uh, the stucco resembles to the one we've been seeing before, but if I hit it, it doesn't make any sound, so it's rather solid. So I assume that this is an um, insulating brick, for example, and maybe an insulating uh, stucco, but 
as a whole it doesn't have a specific insulation layer. Yeah. So in this case you can see that there's an exterior surface, in this uh, case out of nagel flue stone. The load bearing part is a concrete pillar on the inside and there's no insulation because we don't need an insulation here where we are on the outside and behind it there's also the outside so we don't need the insulation we just have the exterior surface and the load bearing part on the inside hmm. this looks like an interesting facade